Alright, hey guys. So, this week we're finally going to start diving into some team-specific stuff. We're past a lot of the general knowledge things, and now, now we're into how we're going to actually function like as a team. So, from, from the previous games that you guys have played, Andrew and I have found that we, that we typically tend to excel with a mix between a catch comp and a split comp. Uh, we don't really know why, but it, it's where you guys seem to click. So we're going to be doing a dive into exactly what this is and hopefully help kind of clean up the focus of the team comp win conditions. So first, I want to break down exactly what is a catch comp and a split comp. I mean, you all know what they are, but I'll lay out the theory just so we're all on the same page. So the things that make up what a catch comp is 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 high mobility burst damage and single target hard cc all three of these elements are crucial to a catch comp and don't really work without them the idea behind a catch comp is to use these tools to establish vision denial in order to look for an unfair fight the the pros of a catch comp is that they are great for punishing mistakes one little greedy step forward and the game could be over in the hands of a really solid catch comp the weakness is that they have some of the worst 5v5 in the game, and they really need some edge, whether that's a numbers advantage or a gold advantage, to actually fight well. On the other side of things, a split. A split is made up of a strong duelist and strong wave clear, with also a healthy portion of disengage. We use this to split enemies apart and punish them, f punish them for making choices across the map. If they choose to send someone bot to catch a split pusher, then they could just die. If they try to ambush the ADC mid instead, then we could use our disengage to get out. Uh, if they try to force an objective, we can use our wave clear to punish. Uh, the pros are, are is it puts a massive pressure on multiple lanes, which can feel really impossible to beat for an enemy team. It's really good at destroying morale. The cons are, though, it's really high risk and easy to mess up. If we stop communicating for like five seconds, it could, really, it could be really easy for the enemy to punish. Communication is key. So, how do these play together? Well, something like this. The key attributes are a certain combination of the other two. Mobility, wave clear, single target RTC, and strong dueling are still important. Things like disengage, though, go on kind of the back burner with, with something as aggressive as this. There's just really no room for it. The win con is to split enemies up and use that pressure, that time where they're split, to set up vision denial for catches. The pros of this is that it, it is the most aggressive, jank-ass bullshit in the game. There is no fair fighting or letting up on the gas pedal. It is constantly fucking with the enemy. Only pressure, pressure, pressure. The cons are, is it's really fucking hard. Uh, it's actually used a lot in professional play, if that highlights any difficulty. Uh, it's also the worst team fight in the game. There's nothing worse. Neither catch nor split really like the team fight. And that's what makes it so hard, especially for low, lower ELO players, because uh, our instinct is typically to fight. But before you fight, you have to know that you have some advantage, and you have to know how to play to it, or, uh, or you're just going to lose. Any even fight is doomed from the start. Okay, so here are the different champ classes that work in either catch or split that we will be utilizing. All these picks, uh, all of these are are going to be used uh, from time to time. All of our picks should be one of these. Divers like Hecarim, catchers like Morgana, and burst mages like Vagar are the best catchers. They have lots of damage, cast potential, and burst. Uh, Vanguards like Alistar or Mumu are, oh, are also okay, but they usually require uh, more abilities or more commitment to do the same thing as a catcher. Uh, so they're, But they're, they're still good, just not ideal. In a split comp, skirmishers and juggernauts reign supreme. Skirmishers like Fiora are intense turret takers. They will strip every objective if left if left alone. Juggernauts are more potent because they require two or three members to kill, sometimes more. So even though they can't take turrets as fast, they draw more pressure. They are also good because in a pinch, they can act as disengage for carries since they have a decent amount of frontline potential. Wardens and Enchanters are also really good, but they offer, but all they offer is disengage most of the time, which limits what they're useful for. Still good, just, again, unideal. Now, the only class that's good in both is Assassins. They're S-Comp and Catch, A-Tier and Split. 
Uh, they're solid catchers because of their burst damage, obviously. And they're solid split because they require two people to answer, or else the assassin will just get a kill. And they can almost always get away from the situation. They're typically pretty slippy. slippery. It's easy for them to... It's easy for them to also rotate up from a split and dive the back line uh, to start a really quick, unfair fight. Okay, so uh, next thing I want to talk about is this thing, which we call the pressure line. Um, so, uh, some of you have seen some of these few slides uh, before, but there is some new stuff, so pay attention. Uh, now, as, <laughs> as I mentioned before, this team comp is literally all about pressure, so it's important that we know this stuff inside and out. A pressure line is very simply the boundary that designates what team controls what parts of the map. At the start of the game, it looks something like this, with the blue side owning the left side and the red side owning the right side. Uh, but it is constantly morphing based off of turrets, objectives, and most importantly, the position of teammates. It is constantly in flux. Uh, we'll be talking about kind of how we're going to manipulate these pressure lines with our split comp. Now, the first kind of split that we're going to talk about is a 4-1 where there's one split pusher and uh, and the they split the non-objective lane while the rest of the team attempt to stall out or even steal the objective. Uh, this is really good when we don't have pressure to lock down the objective. If we have to give the objective, um, a 4-1 forces them to trade one for the other. They either get the drake or they and they lose a turret, or they save the turret and have to give up the drake. A 2-2-1 two, two, is, it's more uncommon, but it is really useful, and I want to start utilizing it, when we have objective pressure. When we have the ability to zone people off, off of it, uh, it's really good. The idea is we can use four people that can mega pressure the objective lanes, so for Baron, that's top and mid, and then rotate to the objective to threaten to take it. During this time, the solo split can push in the pressure line uh, to a really awkward angle for the enemy team and take objectives with it. The enemy team is then forced to make a lose-lose decision every single time. Lastly is the 1-3-1. One, one. Uh, this split is best when there are no objectives up. It's especially good when we have Baron. Uh, that's because it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of time to do properly. Uh, so you typically don't want to do it while there's an objective up. Uh, uh, the idea is that each of the lanes pressure evenly, moving the pressure line straight forward together slowly, pinching the enemy's influence step by step. The 1-3-1 one, on, one must be methodical. If even one lane pushes too far, it almost always ends up with them dying. You must pay attention to how far your team is pushed up and never move further up than your team. Move as a unit forward, slowly close the pressure line on them together, and that's it's the only way to do it. Okay, last thing I want to talk about. This is the last thing, and it's the it's the only guy, it's the only thing that I really care that you guys learn, um, is the this split push checklist. Checklist. It's just three questions: Where's the enemy team? Where's my team? What objectives are up? Um, I definitely recommend using the meditation bell for this, and every time the bell rings, just ask yourself these questions. Uh, these questions also apply to catch comps as well. Uh, the exact same questions, only just different specific questions or scenario to ask yourself. Um, but the th uh, but these are the things you need to memorize. Where's the enemy team? Where's my team? What objectives are up? Where's the enemy team? Where's my team? What objectives are up? If you can ask those questions to yourself once every minute, uh, your awareness is going to be uh, on point. And if someone is constantly asking that during a 5v5 game, uh, I mean, our knowledge is going to be absolutely impeccable. All right, so go ahead and take the quiz. Uh, it is a bit on the long side, but you have the whole weekend to do it. Uh, if you have any questions about it, uh, let me know. Uh, thank you very much for participating. I know, especially Noah, <laughs> these less if you watch this far, uh, these lessons can be a little tedious, but, uh, thank you for sticking with me. Thank you for learning. I hope that you get something from these guys, from this.